going on everybody welcome back to another episode of the vile files ask nick edition i'm nick joined by the household of derek alley and amanda what's going on everybody the household has really stuck like people address their emails they're like yeah, they're, hey nick in the yeah, household and it's it's we found it organically and we got there and that's beautiful no i really like episodes. the household <laughs> the household is a good it's good vibes good energy great Love yeah. That. yeah. Love that for us. We're all thriving. Yeah, Let's... we need a little chime or something, you know? All right. Like well... a doorbell. Oh, for the household. A welcome mat. Ding dong. Go. Yeah. The witch is dead. Let's get into it. What's what do we got okay. to discuss? So I wanted to talk about red receipts. Okay. Mm-hmm. On text messages. Mm-hmm. Because I am intrigued by like just around the room, like, do you have them always on, never on, on for certain people? I have them on for I think one person, two I don't, people. I don't think I Ooh. I don't think I turn them on for anyone. Okay, so consistently off? I think Nally and I have it on. Mine are consistently off. No, don't have them on for anybody? No. Okay. My Derek? boy has them on, but I don't have them on, and I like that power dynamic. <laughs> oh my God, the power <laughs> of being like... <laughs> the boy has them on. Yeah. But you don't. N- yeah. And you like that power dynamic? I was just a joke. I th- I'm sure he has them on for everybody. I think there's a common misconception when it comes to red receipts, and I think that is that not having them on, people think that gives them more power, but I think having them on gives you the opportunity to have more power. Hmm. Because no one likes to be left on red. Totally. And if you have your red receipts off, then they don't really know. They, maybe you're busy, maybe you haven't got to it. But if you have them on and you read it and you don't reply right away, immediately they're like, they feel less than. You've, you've read it and you've said to them, this isn't important enough for me to respond immediately, even like psychologically. So the person who has the red receipts on, in fact, has the opportunity to have more power. I don't feel like he'll read them until he'll respond though. He would never, I don't think he would read it and then, you well, know what I mean? Not until now, he's smitten by you, Allie. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying, that's why I said opportunity. Okay, Mm -hmm. great. He has the opportunity to invoke that power at any moment. And given that you have stated, I don't think he would ever do that, means the first time he does, you're going to be like, what the fuck? And that's power. Yeah. One time, I like, I, it was way back when, like, the first year of working, I don't think we were talking, I don't know if we were talking about our dating lives on the show, but like, I was just dating the worst man. He's like such a bad man. He was the one who texted me about lube after the fact. And when he first... I, I don't remember. I do. That. I do. <laughs> I was like, no, it's, it's okay. We're going to be friends. And now, like, with some distance, I'm like... That's you with girl, every ex. That's you with every he ex. He is not an ex. What, what was... I, He's just a, <laughs> just a string of shit I was dragging along for a while. Sorry, he was not a good person. So I feel vindicated. But anyway, he when he was trying to, like... He was trying to be like, what went wrong after like, ho- like telling me that he met a girl that he thinks he's going to fall in love with and like still expecting to hook up. Mm-hmm. And then he like sent like follow up texts and I turned on my red receipts after having never had them on for the entire relationship just so that way like he- they would sh- display. So it's I do think there's some time you read and, yeah, didn't respond. and didn't respond yeah, to the message. Absolutely. So I think it's very fun in that petty regard. But like, I think there's also in. I feel like we're taking the power approach. How do we feel about like the accountability element of this? Like, In what way? Do you think if you have your red receipts on, like it holds you more accountable in terms of? Mm, well, I hate the word, so to speak, because I think we've created a culture that unnecessarily demands immediate responses because everyone's on their phone and it's not too hard to text type of thing. But like, Especially in dating, because I hear the whole like, I don't get why they're, they're such bad texters. And I've kind of mentioned this in the past on previous shows, but when I've, I've often wondered like what that means, like what do you mean by bad texter? And I, I've come to the conclusion, at least in some cases, in an early dating situation, the more excited person, let's just say, has the opportunity or the more excited person wants to like, 
they want to talk more. They oh, they want to get in these conversations and they want to be like, you know, let's just text throughout the day. And I want them to ask me questions about like, I want to play this or that or 20 questions. I just want to talk, you know? And, and so they, they try to have dates via text in between dates. Mm, that's an amazing point. And I think we need to stop doing that. And we need to let people live their lives and go to work and hang out with their friends and not demand that people be so accessible 24 seven, you know, because we, we do that like subconsciously. We'd expect people to apply, uh, respond immediately. Well, we we're all, we're, we're terrible. We're always on our phones, especially in our cars, you know, so like someone might read your message while driving and have at least the responsibility to say, well, I shouldn't have read that message, but at least I'm going to do is wait till I finish my journey before I reply. <laughs> so maybe there's that, you know, or maybe they are, in the middle of work and they shouldn't be on their phone reading your message, but they do. And maybe they, maybe your question or response takes some consideration. And we just subconsciously demand people respond to us immediately. Totally. And I think it's fucked up. And it feels like, I think sometimes it feels like a form of rejection when they don't. And I feel like people probably get in certain situations, get rejection burnout where because they view it as a rejection, if someone takes a little while to respond to text, or like, I've definitely been in a headspace where it's like, why the fuck aren't you texting me back? You know, and then and then they text me back and I get the like dopamine rush and it's OK. But yeah. because my ego was like, and you're worried. Exhausted, are they mad? Did I do something to make them mad? Did I do yeah. something but see, that's what it, we're red. Like, who do they think be they good? are? Because what? then you're like, there's no way there's no reason to panic when you don't hear back. You're like, they haven't even read it yet. It's genius. Well, that, that's that's one side of the coin. I'm just saying, like, that's, I think, why I'm like, oh, he hasn't read it yet. All good. He'll get to it when he has a chance. Well, it's only, it's only good now because he's smitten. And so <laughs> he does reply immediately when he does read your messages. So up But until he doesn't th- reply immediately. It's not about the response time. I think it's helpful to be he like. He replies immediately once he's read it. Yes. But I don't think he'll read it until he knows he has time to respond to it. Correct. Yes. No, we're on the same page. Great. I'm saying that's <laughs> only working out now because right now he's doing this. But someday he's going to get a message from you. He's going to check it and be like, I'll get to this later. And I don't feel like I'm going to overreact to that. I don't know how you're going to react, but I think you will have a feeling. I would overreact. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I very overreact. No, I feel like I'm in a very good I obviously want to respect your privacy, but it feels like this is exciting and there's a lot of good news in this situation just in terms of like how you're feeling about stuff. Do you want to share? Do any little like victory laps about where you're at right now? I don't think she wants to. Okay. I actually respect that. Yeah. I just wanted to create space to celebrate. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. (laughs) Am I not the creating the space? Like, don't be happy. (laughs) It doesn't have to be. Derek, before, because I do, there's a crazy email that I really want to get to. But Derek, like, what is your take on red receipts? Um, I I don't use them except for like one friend. And I try not to leave them on red and I use the mark as unread feature. So if I'm mm-hmm. genuinely busy, I mark it as unread. But I also Even like... Even after you read it? Yeah. Wait, does that then... Can you do that? Remove what? the re- red receipt? I'm not sure, but in confidence, I believe so. This feels like a lot of effort for this friend. You couldn't just turn off the red receipts? What's the deal with this friend? He wanted red receipts and like we just never unchanged it, you know? I have one friend who I have red receipts with. And it's because like, it's, I can't lie to her. Like, I can't tell white lies, anything, nothing of the sorts. Like, I just, we have a very like, and it's no shade to my other like best friends. But like, it is just like a relationship where there is like... It's like, I, for me, it is accountability because I like fucking love her and I get overwhelmed and I get frustrated with myself for not like investing. I, I suppose that's why Nally and I have it on accountability, I suppose. With you, it's probably her just wanting to make sure you actually read it because you're not always going to respond. And I often don't read e- messages. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious what people have to say in, in the, the YouTube comments. Yes. Tell us your takes on red receipts. And also, I could totally see it as being kind of like one of these milestones in relationships. That's not an official milestone, but is totally like in modern Ooh, culture, yeah. like kind of indicative of where you're at. Like of turning on red receipts. Yeah, like when Define did you, the relationship. Turn on red receipts. Like when did you and Natalie? Do you just do it? I think Natalie just did it. Natalie has red receipts on for everybody. I'm realizing. It's a power move by her. She has it on for everybody. Yeah. It's a confident. I think it's a really. It's like. It's a very confident thing being like, I have nothing to hide. You yeah, can know yeah. when I read messages. I will get to your messages when I can. Um, speaking of someone who's waiting to get to a message, someone emailed in with 
Um, first bit is like very sad, which is ja- that this person lost their mom. She passed away six months ago. And for the last five days in the hospital, it was very you know, clear that what was about to happen. Um, and so a lot of people she was spending all of her time at her mom's bedside. A lot of people were cycling in to visit her. One of her mom's friends who this person said they've never really liked super well, I guess, was making a lot of comments about the daughter like and one of the male nurses being like, "Ooh, he's cute, like basically trying to play matchmaker for this girl at her mother's deathbed. OK. And it really bothered the person who wrote in and she was like it, it like I it felt very disrespectful and like I was in a weird headspace because of this and so I honestly I have some resentment towards this friend because like one of the my mother's like final days like I was you know this was a consideration when it never should have been and this friend of the mother's has recently reached out with a letter like checking in on her and so this this person doesn't know how to respond because they're like upset I understand but I don't want to use the word overreacting, but I think when you were telling me the story, I thought to myself, it might have been fun for mom to to see her daughter have this really beautiful meet cute at the hospital in the last few days of her life. And what a, like, that's the beginning of a rom-com, so to speak. And I get it, not the right place, the right time, or, but everyone handles death differently. You know, it can be awkward and, 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 you know, maybe this friend of mom, you know, does, didn't take mom's death as hard as daughter, which is to be expected. So in a way, daughter is feeling like everyone needs to be as sad as she is. I'm not, I know she probably, I'm, I'm sure if she was here would recognize that she's not actually saying that, but what's really the big deal? Maybe it was just a way for her to try to make a light of a situation. And, you know, I don't know how pushy she was or uncomfortable, but just these situations, like just the, from what I know, I, I think, I think she, she might be a little sensitive, rightfully so, and, and unnecessarily harsh because as she's admitted, it wasn't her favorite person to begin with. I'm sure the loss of her mother has caused a lot of pain and anger and sadness, and she might be channeling that anger this way and, and maybe project, projecting it in a, an unfair way. Because um, I think the bigger and more important thing is this friend is probably thoughtful letter to reach out and check in on her and make sure she's okay. And, and this person wrote, um, the friend obviously wants to continue to have a relationship with me, but I don't know how to get over this this yeah, referring to I, I think you need to get over it yeah I, I wasn't there and maybe there's some context i'm missing but yeah it, what like literally though what if, what if you took her up on this offer what if what if you let her play matchmaker and you went on this date and you met was it a doctor or nurse it was a male nurse and i think it was like she was the, the woman was really the friend was really trying to like make it happen like okay. was kind of like instigating it and i'm assuming she wasn't interested yeah, I think yeah, I think the implication is that she's very think, much not focused on. Oh it. yeah, it just no, no, was I don't like care about what she's focused timing. on. I want to know if, if all things being equal, like, did she think that guy was hot? My guess is she didn't. My guess is she wasn't as interested in the in the nurse as the, the friend, mom's friend mom's friend thought she should be. And we all, we talked about recently about like how offended one can be when someone tries to set you s- up with someone you're not interested in. I would push back on that because even if it was like her exact type of guy, that's not where your head's going to be. And even if it was like a freaking model, you'd uh, be like, shut up, Barbara. I'm not saying that's where her head should be. I'm just saying I don't think a, a crime was committed. I, I just think she's very sensitive right now. But let's say in this rom-com movie, she's offended. And now like she goes to the grocery store and she runs into this very same nurse and they end up hitting it off and having a date like it would turn into an amazing memory it would turn into like remember that one time i was super mad at you but then it ended up being like my husband you know and he's the most amazing thing and now i have this kind of beautiful memory this lasting memory of my mom that like i met my husband like is as terrible as my mom's death was like it brought me to the greatest love of my life i mean i don't think it's going to happen there but just because it doesn't play out that way 
it, it, it could have played out that way. And it's kind of my point. All that really happened here was that someone didn't handle death in the manner that you did. And we all know that death is incredibly difficult and awkward and people handle difficult and awkward situations with humor sometimes, with kind of disconnecting from reality, you know? So I would, I would not be so harsh on judging your mom's friend for how she chose to handle your mom's death. And I would challenge her to not take it as personal because clearly she wasn't trying to be disrespectful because she clearly cares about you. She's followed up with a letter. It just wasn't received in the way she meant it to be received and you didn't take it the way she hoped. That's just like chalk that up to like not being on the same page. I don't know if we really need to like, I don't even think you need to hash it out. Yeah. I think if you healed a little bit, you might recognize that nothing no crime was committed here and at the end of the day this was this all came this all came from a place of love totally and also i think one thing i learned with my grandmother um because my grandfather passed away when i was much younger is like my grandmother loves to talk about him like i think sometimes mm -hmm. when people pass away we have this tendency to be like i don't want to remind them of grief and loss and there's totally you know that's totally a case-by-case -case basis in reading the room but like i think it can be so special to have people who can keep their memory alive and who can talk to you about stuff and who can truly empathize with like the very specific things you're missing. And I think another reason why it might be nice to continue a relationship with this friend of your mom's, even it, though you might be frustrated with how she handled this, is like knowing that she knew your mom really well and that like it might afford you some time to like really get to like reminisce and celebrate. Or even like hear new stories. Yeah, yeah. Learn more about her. But I'm so sorry for your oh my loss. Gosh, yeah. I feel like I nailed this, but I, I'm betting a lot of people disagree with me. I, I would love to hear I'm people's perspective. I'm confident in my take, but... Please share your take and like why. Like, feel free to leave a paragraph. I do read them. Now, we have a breakup song of the week. And I thought that this was a really nice one because the person who sent this in has been married for two years with their husband for 11. But they kind of dedicated this to all the Vile Files listeners and the people who call in because... This person said they relate so much to all of the things that everyone's encountering. Sometimes they get very tangible pieces of advice that they can apply to their marriage and to all the single people like, you know, they did their time in that headspace and have a lot of empathy. And so this is kind of like a dedication to the callers. Um, they said this song makes uh, makes them think of the callers, which I thought was really sweet. This song is called What Did You Mean By Love by Wolfpack. Uh, and the lyrics they highlighted are... Love, what did you mean by love? Is that a word you meant to whisper with kisses down her neck? Love, and what did you mean by that? And what exactly did you expect would happen? She'd pat you on the back, stand up, and start slow clapping? Love, what did you mean by love? You must have meant like you strongly. Yeah, unless you meant just your body. Just enough to stay, but not enough to fall. Instead of giving up, what did you mean by love? Great. All right. Breakup song of the week. Breakup song of the week. Please send them in if you have one. This episode is brought to you by Better Help Therapy. People, I don't know if you're not doing it, uh, you're missing out. I'm telling you, it's uh, solving a lot of problems for a lot of people, including myself. Um, and if you haven't done it, I just don't know what you're waiting for. Invest in your mental health because uh, it's just as important as your physical health. It's just as important as your financial health. And there's a lot of things in this world to worry about, and don't do it alone. Do it with a mental health professional and BetterHelp is making it easier than ever before to connect with a mental health professional and find one that's right for you. We all know that therapy can be intimidating. It can be discouraging. And once you're ready to do it, then there's this whole process of finding a therapist that, you know, where do I go? Who do I ask? BetterHelp, it's super easy. They're working with thousands of therapists. They're working with new therapists every day. They make it super easy to go. You just go to betterhelp.com. You take a quick assessment of type of therapy you're looking for. They will assign you to a mental health professional. You can do it from your phone, your tablet, your computer, your convenience of your car, your home, uh, wherever you are. Everything about BetterHelp is convenient and easy. It's more affordable than in-person therapy. And it's been so great to so many of our listeners. And so take the next step in your mental health journey and try BetterHelp. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash V-I-A-L-L today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this show. Caraway, just last week I had two people 
asked me to hook them up with a caraway set just because they are obsessed with my pots and pans. We had company over, I made them dinner, and they were just like, these are amazing. I'm like, I know, they're caraway. And they're like, you hook it up? I'm like, no. I got a code for you. Because I've tried to get more stuff from caraway, and they're like, no, our stuff's too valuable. (laughs) We're obsessed with caraway. Uh, I have two caraway sets. I also have cookie sheets. They have amazing baking ware. Uh, Their pots and pans are incredible. What I love about them is, they're first of all, they're just aesthetically nice, and they're easy to cook, and they're easy to clean. And they're not made with toxic materials like PFAs, PTFEs, or PFOAs that so many pots and pans out there have. Over 40,000 people have raved about their Caraway Kitchen, and now is the time to try it for yourself. You can now save 10% off the full suite of Caraway products from their internet famous cookware to their newly launched food storage set. It's truly the best pots and pans on the market. I absolutely love them. And if you're looking for a new pot and pan set or great bakeware, check out Caraway. You won't be disappointed. It also makes an amazing gift for anyone who loves a kitchen. Visit carawayhome.com slash V-I-A-L-L to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive to our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash V-I-A-L-L or use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. All right. Well, we have a great week lined up for you. Before we get to our callers, a couple housekeeping notes. Tomorrow, we have Violet Benson joining us to recap the uh, most current episodes of Love is Blind. I know we, uh, if you're uh, wanting more updates, we did it on Vile Files Plus for all the people who couldn't wait to us uh, breaking it down. We did the first eight episodes with Phoebe. It's kind of as a season recap up until... Uh, now and so we'll be doing the next three episodes we, nine through eleven nine just through dropped 11 this with, past friday with, with violet and then we have girl boss town returns to going Woo! deeper Woo-hoo! we'll get into a ton of pop culture topics with her i am sure uh it will be a ton of fun we'll probably get into scandal some vanderpump she's uh fully read in all things uh pop culture that'll be a ton of fun with girl boss town be sure to check that out as well uh, we have more updates. Uh, we have more episodes of Better Date Than Never, all available behind Vile Files Plus. Uh, be sure to check that out for anyone who hasn't tried it. I don't know what you're waiting for. You have a seven day free trial. People love it. People have taken that seven day free trial and said, I want more. And if you haven't signed up yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Don't forget, we do have another episode of Better Date Than Never live on Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. It's the greatest friend group in the world for all the people out there who are lonely and just want to create a community of daters and and, and make friends. People are making friends in there. We're talking sex, dating, relationships. It is a ton of fun. Be sure to check that out as well. Uh, Anything else I'm missing? Just that. (laughs) In addition to the amazing content we are already creating, we might be doing a new segment. This is Amanda's pitch. (laughs) Yeah. And then loves people a good love pitch. hello sharks. Um, this segment would be called "Sweating the Wedding," and it is akin to texting office hours. People can write in with something wedding related that they're sweating about. So it could be they don't know what plus one to bring. It could be your bride who doesn't know who to pick. So is this isn't exclusive to like the bride and groom. No, this you is- could be in the wedding party. You could be the bridesmaid. You could be the groomsman. You could just be invited and you don't know who to take. Um. Maybe you're in a fight with the bride or groom, anything wedding related. Because it brings, weddings bring a lot of stuff that can be kind of chaos and petty stuff to the surface. So if you're having trouble figuring out how to split the hotel room you're sharing with your friends, like literally any of that kind of like wedding conflict drama that you're sweating and want help with, send it in. Or say, fuck you, Amanda. (laughs) No way will I do this. I'm sure some people will. Okay. Get to our call. What's your time with Nick? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Hi, Nick. I'm good. I'm messy. I'm 34 years old and I'm having a problem with my best friend and she won't stop flirting with my husband. Okay. So she's your best friend, like bestie? So it's complicated. Like, My two best friends live in Florida, like the ones I'm closest with. Um, And this is like my best friend that lives close by me. So like she's the person who I see most often. But my I guess my real best friends are the ones in Florida. Okay. Um, And how certain are you that she is flirting 
as opposed to just being friendly. Like, you know, and everyone has a different uh, interpretation of flirting. Uh, are you fairly confident or is there a chance that you could be, you know, sensitive? Give me some examples, maybe. I mean, I'm definitely sensitive, so it could definitely be like I'm reading way, way too much into it. Okay. Um, but like when I sat down to write you the email and I like looked at all of the things all together, like before I sent it, I was like, this kind of seems like I'm not making it up. Sure, sure. Um, but um, I think she is friendly, but also, I don't know. I just think she doesn't have like good boundaries in general. Okay. Um. So a couple of the examples, um, like one time we were out with with friends and I don't drink just like per- personal preference. She does. Um, she doesn't drink very often, though. And when she does, she always gets like a little more flirtatious, I guess. And she was like going around the room asking all of our guy friends, like, I want to see who has rough hands and who has soft hands. Like, I want to touch all the guys hands. And like, I just think that's weird in general. Like, that's not something I would ever ask to do. And so I said to her, I was like, no, you're not going to touch my husband's hand. Like, that's weird. Like, no. And she got like very offended and gave me like such a hard time about it and brought it up like many times after, which I thought was weird. So that was like one of the times, um, another time. What do you mean she brought it up? Like, how did she bring it up? Like she, like, so our husbands work together, which also complicates things. And one time she was like bringing her husband something at work because they're firefighters. They work like shift work. So she was bringing her husband something. She was like, oh, do you want me to bring anything for your husband? And I was like, no, I'm good. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'll make sure to try to stroke his hand again. Like, oh, OK. So like in a pet, petty way. Yeah. Like just weird. Like and I just never know what to say when she says it. I feel like I'm always like like with my mouth open. Like I just like it always like catches me off guard. Like I always think of something good to say later, you know? Yeah. Have you ever confronted her and just say, hey, you know, like I know you're just a really nice person and i know you like being friendly but once in a while there, it just makes me feel uncomfortable and i'd love for you to like not do that <laughs> yeah i just like haven't known how to say it yet like i know i probably need to say it in the moment i know she'll probably like take more offense to it if i say it like not in the moment but i don't there's been times where she said things and and I've sort of called her out on it, but just like not bluntly enough. What like are some other examples. So I've s- told her before, like my husband doesn't like it when I wear like, you know, dark eyeliner or like heavy makeup, long nails, whatever. And so we're all out dressed up. And she was like, oh, I wore like dark eyeliner and long nails, just like your husband hates. Like, and she was like this way, um, he'll be able to like pay even more attention to you. And I was like, what? I literally just said like, what? And she was like, yeah, like, because I don't look good. Like, you'll shine more. That's a little weird. And I just, I I thought it was so weird. I'm like, A, I'm like, A, I'm no, like, supermodel, but, like, I don't need you to look ugly to make me look pretty. And, like, B is just, like, kind of a rude thing to say. And C, like, why do you, like, even remember that I told you this about my husband? Like, it's just weird. Why is that even a thought in her head? Yeah, like, why is she thinking about it so often? And how does your husband like, feel about know. this? It, like, makes him so uncomfortable. Like, Does he think she's flirting with him? Yes, at this point now. Like, in the beginning, he was like, oh, you're crazy, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, there's just been so many incidences now, like, that he's like, okay. Like, th- there was one other time, too. This is the other, like, big one. I was making her birthday dinner. She came in and like my husband was like flipping the chicken on the stove while I was like setting the table or something. And she was like, oh, like you're making me my my birthday dinner. And he was like, no, like my wife is making you your birthday dinner. And then she brought it up again in front of her husband, like at dinner and was like, oh, like um, he made me dinner um, for my birthday. How come you've never done that? And I wasn't in the room, but my other friend that was there told me that he just like shut it down and was like no i didn't uh do you think she's happy with her marriage no you know that so you know that okay so he cheated on her like early on when they were dating okay um like badly like slept with multiple women um and for some reason she stayed with him decided to forgive him you know they ended up getting married having kids but like they just they fight all the time um she complains about him a lot. Um, I have like a very happy marriage, I would say. 
Um, my husband and I are both good communicators. Like I just, I adore him. Um, he's a good husband. He's a good dad. Um, it's not something I like brag about, but I just don't talk negatively about him. Well, you, as, yeah, as I see it, you have kind of two choices, right? Like, I don't know how much this bothers you and I don't know how secure you are in your relationship with your husband. It sounds like pretty secure. Sounds like there's yeah. a lot of trust there. Sounds like you're not worried yeah, about sure. him at all. Um, no. You two, I guess, on some level could mutually decide to just kind of ignore her mm-hmm. when she says shit like that and kind of continue to do what you're doing, being like, yeah, no, I didn't. But like, whatever. Tell yourself whatever you want, you know, because it sounds like, you know, it would, it would be easy to assume that she's probably unhappy. And like, this is more about just her acting out and her unhappiness than anything to do with your husband. Yeah. And then the whole like, you know, the hand stroking in her comments, like she probably feels a little bit called out on you and she's handling it in a very immature way of like addressing it to you. I think she is pretty emotionally immature. Like there's been lots of times where she's just like not handled things like how I would as an adult. She also doesn't have a lot of female friends. Like, well, that wouldn't, she's not, she's feeling their husband's hands. (laughs) It's a different level. I know. But you also can confront her too. There's always the, like sit down with her and be like, Hey babe, like this want to talk to you. It's just like, listen, I just, every once in a while you make and give her these specific examples. Like it just like makes me uncomfortable. Like, I'm not worried about you, but I just don't know why you're saying this stuff. Like, it's just like, you shouldn't be saying this stuff to me or like, you know, and ask her, like, is there something, you know, at home that you want to talk about with me, (laughs) you know? Well, I feel like something to mention, too, is not even like, whatever, if she was drinking and she thought it was like a fun game to like feel people's hands, like, I guess. Mm -hmm. But what bothers me even more is that she kind of like continued to like throw it in your face after the fact. So maybe that's something you could emphasize, too. like. You know, I tried to express to you as a friend that that made me uncomfortable. And instead of listening and respecting that boundary that I put down, you kind of threw it back in my face. And I really didn't appreciate that. And it didn't make me feel great. Yeah. I guess the question is how well do you think, like, how, how important is this to you? You know, that's what I mean, like best friend. Is she like your Mm -hmm. closest friend who lives in your neighborhood and she's like your closest friend by proximity because she's just around. And and your husband's work together and and your kids are friends. And she's like a fairly cool hang when she's not trying to like, you know, low key fuck your husband. Yeah, like I enjoy spending time with her and like she has been a good friend to me in a lot of ways. Like, you know, we did IVF for all of our kids and she watched my twins while I went to go get the transfer for a third, like. 7 a.m. You know, she has two kids of her own. Watch my twins for me, like stuff like that. Like she'll she'll help me whenever I need help. Like if I'm sick, she'll drop off soup. Like she's not a bad person, and I don't want to lose her as a friend. I enjoy spending time with her. I I think um, it's just uh, these things. Yeah, it just depends on how well you think she will handle this confrontation, or if you really want to do it. I think she'll feel like really bad, and it'll she'll probably be like awkward with me for a little bit, but. I think in general, she doesn't want to make me unhappy, you know, like she's asked me before, like, oh, are you mad at me? Like, or, oh, like, I, I, I feel like I offended you about such and such a thing. So. So, yeah, I mean, maybe then if she's willing to ask those questions, you just be honest with her and be like, hey, again, I love you. I don't think you're trying to, like, fuck my husband, but like you just whatever I f- like, I don't think you're malicious. I just you're doing things, whether you realize it or not, that make me feel yeah. uncomfortable. And it would mean a lot to me. If you can, you know, be aware of some of the things you say, you know, and another, another thing, I think your husband can also be a little rude to her. You know, I think it, he could go so far as to like act annoyed at it, when she does this shit, he has a right to like roll his eyes and just kind of like act put off by her and make okay. her like, yeah, feel, he definitely doesn't have a problem doing that. So <laughs> he should, he should make it obvious. Because this is the type of person who is seeking validation somewhere else because she's not getting it at home. And there's no better way for her to get her to stop doing that by making him make her feel a little embarrassed for it. Okay, I can talk to him about that. I mean, he definitely wouldn't have a problem doing that. Like I said, with the whole Because right now he's probably just more or less awkwardly ignoring her and just like whatever. But like, I think he could just be a little bit more obvious that he is repulsed by that. Yeah. And that could, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's the first one, 
you know, he, she might stop real quick when she feels like he just threw up in his mouth. Yeah, I think she'll be really embarrassed, like, if I went, if and when I do say something. Regardless of bringing up your husband and her behavior, have you ever sat her down and just said, like, how are things at home? Like, how are you in whatever his name is? Like, are you happy? Like, how are things? Yeah, I mean, we definitely, like, we talk every day. So, like, for sure, I, you know, I'll be like, how's your day going? Like, no, but specifically you know, her with husband, her relationship. Like, how are you? I guess Tom? not. Yeah. No, I don't think I have like actually said that. Like we talk about our relationships, but I haven't like asked specifically. Yeah. I think like, like an intentional check-in like, Hey, how are you and Eric? How are you guys doing? Like, is everything okay? You know, like, and just see what she okay. gives you. And, and maybe okay. she, you know, maybe you guys can become closer there and you don't bring up this quite yet, you know, just see how she's going. Okay. And maybe just mm -hmm. through that conversation, it'll create a, a better opportunity to bring it up down the line. Or maybe she will, through that conversation, realize that, you know, what she's doing, you know, I don't know. Okay. But yeah. And the other thing I was like thinking about bringing up too, is like she, one of our other friends, like sometimes if she drinks too much, she'll flirt with this friend's husband and, and my friend hates it she'll be like oh i can't leave those two in a in a room alone together and so like if she's that upset about that i'm all i'm and she's probably I'm like, just not self-aware i mean I, I don't think she's malicious yeah. she's probably just an insecure and unhappy and she's starving for attention but she's not getting at home and it's okay. not an excuse and doesn't make it okay and she's no you know, i'm not saying no, she's yeah. completely unaware but yes and then the few like i would first I, i'd first just like have a conversation with your husband and give him the green light to just really react like react he's super uncomfortable, like he's super uncomfortable and turned off by any time she does this Two, I would check okay. in with her and leave out her the situation with your husband and just ask how she's doing and if she's happy and how her relationship is going and just be that kind of really, you know, considerate friend who's there for you. If it if okay. there is an opportunity in the future to and to say, hey, you know, yeah, if I'm being honest. You know, every once in a while you act this way towards my husband and it makes me feel uncomfortable. And like, I know how you feel about so-and-so and I don't think you're doing it on purpose, but if I'm just being honest with you, every once in a while you make me feel like so-and-so makes you feel. And I know you don't right. mean to, but I really, it would, as a friend, it would mean a lot to me if you could just be more aware of it because I don't think you're doing it on purpose, but it does make me feel uncomfortable and I do love you. And I just hope that we can be honest with each other about this. Okay. I think that's a really good way to put it. Okay. Yeah, I think if you like check in on her and really make her feel like she's there for you about her relationship, it will open the doors for these types of conversations that you can have. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And feeling seen. Cause it's like, I feel like, I don't know when you're yeah. happy in a relationship. She's probably, yeah. She's just probably lonely and is acting out. Yeah, I've wondered that too. She also like whenever we go out in that way, like, you know, she's she's thinner than I am. She'll like, like wear a crop top and like, I don't know. I feel like it's intentional sometimes. Like she's looking for attention. Of course, of course. especially yeah. if she's not getting at home. And if she, even if she is, maybe sense. this is again like, I don't know how she dealt with being cheated on or, or and that trauma. And maybe she hasn't fully processed that trauma. Maybe she just chose to. I don't. I don't think she has. Forgive him and accept it and hope that he stops. Yeah, and he did. I mean, he hasn't that we know of since then. And I never would have guessed that he did, like when I met him. So. But again, yeah. But who knows? Who knows how she's processed this? Right. So. All right. Thank well, you so keep, much. Keep That's us really posted. We, we love this neighborhood drama. <laughs> Tell us how the conversation goes. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. I will. I definitely will. I love listening to you guys. Oh, I know I'm married, but I, I love all the different kinds of advice you guys have. Oh, so. we love. Well, we love you listening, and thank you for being a part of our show um, and uh, sharing the story. It's certainly a, a it's an, it's just a juicy one, and it's and it's also so relatable. Of like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like that friend. I think this shit like, happens all the time. Yeah. The neighborhood drama, you know, and it's just like yeah. not every marriage is happy. You don't really know what's going on behind right. closed doors, and. You know, yeah. so-and-so got cheated on and, you know, I doubt she's actually trying to fuck your husband, but I think she just, right. she wants to feel pretty and she wants to feel important. She wants to feel like she still has it. She wants to feel desired and it's not getting, she's not getting at home and. 
And maybe she's trying to make her husband jealous sometimes. It seems yeah. like some of the times it's like one on one and it's just to you. And that's all the stuff that Nick just mentioned. But I also think there's maybe a component oh. of the like, well, she he cooked f- me dinner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not really about you or ha- your husband. It's more. Yeah. So try to be closer to her and try to be there for her and then see where it goes. You know. Okay. That's a good idea. All right. Well, keep right. us posted. Sounds good. I'll let you know how it goes. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. One thing about Amanda, she likes to take care of her soul, mind, and body. No, it's true. We get one body in this lifetime, and I sometimes... It's your vessel. It's our vessel. It is our car that we will forever drive, and I want to keep the make sure the oils are, are running well. <laughs> and so, of course, the like a health you know, living a healthful life has so many components. But like one thing that I've recently integrated that I've been like a huge fan of is the care of uh, vitamins. And I also they have a collagen powder that I got. Yes. And also I have the flavor, the passion fruit flavor. And I love passion fruit. She and so it is like not only fruit. like chock full of like the ingredients I want for my hair, my skin, my nails, my body, etc. Um, but it tastes delicious. They also um, all of my vitamins come in these adorable little like packs that you can open at the beginning of the day. Like we've mentioned before, it's awesome for traveling. Mm-hmm. Well, that's my favorite part because I've always tried to get on like vitamin routines and it wasn't until care of that I've been able to stick with it because they make it super easy to like just have the vitamins you need to take every day and especially when you travel because that's where I get off track. So you go to their website, you take a short in-depth quiz about your lifestyle and health goals for a personalized doctor-backed recommendation, which completely takes the guesswork out of what supplements are best suited for you because I feel like there's so much out there and you're just going to be wandering the vitamin aisle not knowing what's going to work for you. For 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code VIALL50. That's VIALL50. Again, for 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code VIALL50. ZocDoc might be the greatest invention of mankind, second to maybe fire, or uh, maybe third if you include the wheel. I don't know, but I think it's incredible because. It is such a pain in the ass to find the right doctor that takes your insurance and, and, and is available. I just found my new dentist on ZocDoc because I had found my previous dentist on ZocDoc, was trying to get back with her. She's no longer with that practice. And I've moved. So I said, why don't I try and find someone even closer to me? Boom. I'm pretty sure my new dentist is two or three minutes from me. Absolutely love her. Um, I went for my checkup. I got whitening. We're doing a little procedure on Friday. Every time I walk in, she greets me with a smile. She like touches my arm. She's very sweet. She's like a little grandmother figure. And I love her so much. Patient reviews on their website. So, you know, you can read direct reviews for people who actually saw these doctors. Again, they you will find out if they take your insurance or not. Many are available within 24 hours. That's incredible. It's incredible. ZocDoc is a free app. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviews, take your insurance, and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? Good. I'm Megan and I'm 26 years old. And I am wondering after three failed attempts at a father figure, um, is it worth salvaging a relationship with the last one? Okay. Uh, So is this the fourth one or is this the third one? This is the third one. Okay. Uh, And then I'm assuming the first one is your biological father? No. So it's kind of a complicated backstory. I'm not okay. sure if you want me to explain that. Give us, first a, you know, or... give us a brief little uh, diagram. Yeah. Okay. So my mom was married really young. She was okay. married at 16 and she got married um, to my first stepdad. We'll call him Ken. Uh, she got married to him when she was 16. That marriage ended before any kids were involved when she was around like 20 And then she met my biological dad when she was um, about 25. They had two kids, um, got married. Their relationship didn't work out. Um, And then when that marriage failed, she ended up getting remarried to Ken. And we moved across the country. And then that was my first stepdad. What happened to my biological biological dad? dad? Is he in your life at all? So... Unfortunately, he passed away in 2013. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, and that's a, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and two years before that, 
uh, Ken had actually passed away as well. So within about a span of two years, I had lost like two significant father figures, which was pretty, yeah, pretty I'm gnarly sorry. for a 16 year old. But yeah, but yeah. let's not call them failed attempts, right? Right. I, I guess more fractured is the way I look at it. Like all these all these men in my life, like there's something has went wrong along mm. the way. And it's, you know, whether that was a passing or, you know, anything like that. And sure. then, so this current stepdad, the issue that I'm calling in about, um, a- about a year after my biological dad had passed away, my mom was kind of looking, I think for a marriage that was easy, didn't come with a lot of baggage because we were going through so much. And I mean, she was kind of like, she's very traditional. And so she, you know, she just really wanted to be to be married again and, and to have somebody, you know, who would bring her coffee and would love us kids, but wouldn't really bring in necessarily like, you know, stepkids and, and any sort of extra drama. I think she wanted to protect us from that. So they got married about a year or so after my dad had passed away. How old were you? So he's been in my life now for about 10 years. Okay. He uh, came in. Yeah. So he came into the marriage when I was, yeah, 16. Okay. And then they mom and dad, and then they got divorced, I'm guessing at some point. Uh, They, so they just recently got divorced, um, which is why, I mean, so much kind of has happened over this last 10 years. Um, And so they, yeah, they just recently got divorced in November. Gotcha. What's your relationship yeah. with him, regardless of um, your relationship with, with, yeah, what's your relationship with him, regardless of what his relationship is with your mom? It was always really positive. I mean, I think I really craved a nuclear family growing up, and so I was really, really accepting of him coming into the family. I know my brother had more issues than I did with that, but I was always um, really welcoming of him and we established a great friendship a great relationship there was one point um where he wanted to adopt me and i was open to that um that never actually ended up happening but i mean i was really really welcoming Mm -hmm. to him and yeah we just we had a great a great relationship the only thing that i'll say um that now i've kind of done a lot more thinking about is our relationship was i think more surface level than i had really thought that it was i thought it was deeper um what made you have that realization yeah well it's just like looking at the way that lots of this has kind of unfolded he's handled it in a way that's just like like baffling um he my boyfriend jokes all the time like if he if you could like put him in a wind-up doll and he could only say five things he would say keep being amazing um, I love my family so much. You're so wonderful. But I mean, in terms of myself, my brother and I, like he just doesn't really ever contribute to any sort of deep intellectual thinking when we're all together as a bunch. He's always just there and positive, if that makes sense. Sure. But like, there's value there. I mean, not everyone yeah. wants to like dig deep all the time. What do you, I mean, you, right. you, know, you first called in and said, you know, you're, you want to salvage potentially this relationship with you know, your stepdad. And you said after, you mm-hmm. know, three failed attempts. I do think, I think our language is important of how we tell ourselves things and the narratives we write for ourselves. And you like, logically, you know that like, it's not your fault because they died. But like, when you say failed, there's, there's a sense of fail failure in the word failure, fail. Right. You, you get what I'm saying. Right. Um, yeah. And I don't know, like, if there's some deep rooted issues of like this sense of like abandonment, like does a, did you, is there something you did or anything like that? And again, like maybe that's something you want to unpack and something like therapy, but, but yeah, I just, the fact that you use the word fail there, I just, I, I hate that for you and I don't want you to, right. you know, and, and it might be, you know, logically speaking, but we, our brain doesn't always work logically and you, there could be a part of you that feels a sense of fault or failure with the past relationships for whatever reason. You know, I don't know. So, but let, let a professional unpack that for you. But anyway, just yeah. for you, maybe just start changing that word internally. You know, as far as this relationship, I mean, from what you're telling me, I don't know if they're like, do you want him in your life? You know, and like, he doesn't have to be some like, he doesn't have to be the person that you go to for therapy, for example. Like, maybe he's not like the, 
the the Nick in your life, so to speak, who like, you know, I'm the guy, my friends like, you know, they can sit down and if they want to like go deep about their feelings, I'm pretty good at that. And I'll listen and I'm, I enjoy it. Right. I love going deep. Not everyone's like that, but you don't need that to have like a father figure. You know, you don't need that to have a friend. Right. You don't need that to have a mentor. You know, those types of things can al- yeah. offer different things. But the thing is, do you just, do you, do you want him in your life, you know, to be there for you at times and you need, you know, cause while he might not be the person you go deep with, the always positive person could be nice to have when you need a, a pick me up, you know, when maybe you're feeling down and if you still had a relationship with him, maybe he, he could be the person that you call and say, Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Can we grab lunch? And then you meet with a guy right. who's like always finding ways to be positive about things. And maybe that's just the type of like the medicine you need. Right. And it's just nice to know he's there. And maybe he's just someone you see a few times a year, you know, but he's right. still, he's still someone there that you can call and talk to and be there for. And, you know, it might get weird if he moves on from your mom and dates someone else. But like, as long as your mom's happy, you can still be there for him and you guys can develop a, a type of friendship that's, you know father-like in a way right you know he's still there for you right. and he checks in but I, th- I feel like that's kind of up to you and him i guess you know if you want that relationship you're a 26 year old adult woman you don't need your mom's permission you don't need your brother's permission if you want to have a relationship with this guy no and i like i completely agree and i, I think that's why i'm feeling so conflicted is because i see all of those benefits to having him in my life the issue that i'm like really struggling with though, is I just, I don't trust him. The reason that the marriage kind of dissolved is, you know, he kind of, he, he led us all through this game for years of like lies and promises of, you know, financial stability, I suppose. And, um, it wasn't until that they were like my mom and him were supposed to sign off on like their dream property. Um, Mm -hmm. Literally like the pen was supposed to meet the paper. And then he like just dropped all of this stuff on her lap. And she just was like, I can't bail you out anymore. And I mean, for years though, like we had kind of been sheltered from all of that, my brother and I, because I think for my mom's perspective, she you know, she was married to this guy. Like if your partner messes up, you're not going to go straight to family supper and be like, oh my God, guess what he did. But I mean, after, you know, like we're adults now. So when the marriage ended and we were like, what the heck happened? You know, it was just kind of like, oh my God, do we have any idea who you are? Um, Cause all of, all of this was just kind of like lies that had oh, been okay. hidden from us for years. And then even now, like we've seen him a couple times and there's been zero like it's like it honestly the analogy i give is that i feel like we'll call him john i feel like john spilled the milk on the floor and has literally been watching my mom my brother and i and our respective partners now like clean up this mess and just like looking down on us and being like How's it going, sweetie? You're I miss wonderful. you so much. It's amazing. I love my family. Oh, you're wonderful. What, have you and I'm just like, confronted him about this? We The first meeting, like after the marriage ended, was very teary-eyed, you know, because I don't think it had really all come to the surface at this point, but we definitely knew the root of the issue. And so, I mean, we were also out drinking beers. Like, we weren't going to, like, necessarily... <laughs> I don't think anybody was prepared to get into like a crazy, you know, what, what happened because it was also, you know, in my opinion, it wasn't the 26 year old's job to interrogate the 55 year old's job, you know, like it was, it just didn't really want to go there. It's not your job per se, but you, you want answers. Yeah. And I feel like, like, you know, this whole, like, well, it's not my job. Like you're right. It's not. And you, and if, and if you were like, I don't know, it's not my dad. I don't give a shit about him. He did a fucked up thing. I never want to talk to him again. You'd have every right to feel that way. And you could just wipe your hands clean, but you, you have questions. It pisses you off that he is not taking accountability for this mistake. And so, so the fact that like, you know, and the fact that he's 55 and you're 26 is kind of irrelevant. You know, like if you want to get answers. You got to have to ask questions. 
because expecting the expecting the person who did this type of thing to magically yeah. turn into someone who is accountable, who is upfront, who will take responsibility. Well, that's not the person who would probably do something like this. So, you know, if you right. want a relationship with him at at all, I mean, even if you don't want a relationship with him, I would you might as well ask the questions. We all trusted you. Like I just I'm just having a hard time understanding A, why you could do this, and B, it just doesn't feel like you're all that sorry about it. And that's really hurtful right. to me because I do care about you. And you've been my father for the past 10 years. And I, I feel betrayed by you. And that's really hurtful. Yeah. And I think you have the right to tell him how you feel about what he did to you as well as your mom and the family. And if nothing else, right. you just getting that out may make you feel better and give you the closure that you need. But it has to come from yeah. you. Like he's not, you know, we always talk about like closure comes from within, it comes from yourself. It doesn't come from other people. But like even you just asking those those questions and confronting him, I don't know what he's going to say. And, and his answers might not be very, they might not do anything for you. I don't know. But you confronting yeah. him, I think will go a long way. And it might yeah. lead to saying, hey, listen, like I'm really heartbroken. I'm really sad. And but I, I still hope that we can have some sort of relationship. But if we do have a relationship, I want it to be honest and I want it to be upfront mm -hmm. and I want to be mm -hmm. able to challenge each other. And I want you to, you know, like, as a, as my, the father finger in my life, I want you to look out for me and, and, and call me out if I'm acting out. And, and as someone who cares about you, I want to do the same for you. You know, as an adult man, I still respect my parents, but if I saw my parents acting a certain way, like I'm going to check them. You know, I'm, I'm not a kid right. anymore and you're not either. You're an adult, tw you're an adult woman and you have the right to challenge other adult people in your life who you think are not treating themselves or the other people in your life with respect and love. Well, and I mean, all, like all of what you're saying is so true. Like it's been like six months or five months of like stewing about this and thinking about how I want to move forward. Cause I feel like I have so much like, you know, I have a, like a, I have a want for like a consistent father figure and like in my head, in my brain, I was thinking, you know, what's the right way to go about this? Me and my partner were like, all right, you know what, we'll invite him over for supper. We'll have, you know, we'll have some, have a drink, have dinner, you know, that's the olive branch to like, be like, you know, this is a safe space. And then I was going to write him a letter and read it to him, essentially like confronting him about it okay because i like i feel like i'm way better at typing things out sure. than i am speaking but um yeah so that that was kind of the whole plan and we were trying to come up with days to do it and then out of the blue he posted on his social media like no heads up to any of us that he's in a new relationship with a woman who he's known for 20 years who has two adult children about mine and my brother's age and there was like and he's still technically an Elise with my mom so it just feels like super messy and then I guess after after all of that I was like oh my god like I I was so angry because I was like at least a heads up or like the respect of like you know and I think it, it brought up a lot of stuff for me too because I had like I was working and I had a lot of my friends texting me being like oh my god is your mom okay and I was like what do you mean like I it kind of like brought back like some PTSD of like you know, all this like terrible stuff that had happened. And then I saw, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is, this sucks. Like, you know, and then I, I, like, I went down this rabbit hole of like, has this been going on for a long time? Like, did her kids get the respect of a conversation? It, like it just, yeah. you know, I mean, and I, then he has the audacity to like, just text me out of the blue being like, Hey, let's catch up. I, I, like, I hear you. I hear why that's upsetting, yeah. but they're broken up and it's been what, well, six months. I would have been so happy for him had he just let us know. Yeah, but like, I mean, come on. Like, this is a guy who hasn't taken accountability for you know, lying to your mom about finances. So I guess, yeah, like it was a really... So you're expecting a guy yeah. who's done far worse to do the right thing when it comes to being upfront and communicating with his ex and her kids. And I know. So I, that's why I'm like, do I move on with a relationship with him? Like, do I try? Do I, do I respond? Well, to this I, I guess nothing's really said? changed. 
you know, this whole idea that you want to write him a letter and sit down with him and just read it to him, nothing's changed. He's right. still that same, you know, selfish, immature, bad communicator that he was before. Nothing's new. He just has a, <laughs> a girlfriend. And, like, people are allowed to move on, you know? Rightfully so. Your mom, your mom decided he didn't want to be with him. Totally get that. And he, while he fucked up, like, he still has the right to want to date. And how he communicated that to you and his family, like, your, your expectations of him are probably just a little too high, you know? But your need and want to communicate to him, your frustration of his actions, quite honestly, not only has it not changed, it's been reinforced. Even if you don't r confront him, write the letter. Even right. if you never send it to him, it'll, it'll help you get it out. Because right now, you're just right. ruminating just in your head sucking so much energy out of you so write it yeah put it away for a while i don't know if you you know maybe do a couple drafts have your boyfriend read it you know like okay but if nothing yeah. else you you know you you want to confront them so confront them you know you want to get it out and maybe that will give you the closure you need to just move on and i'm very okay. sorry that you've had this experience with you know your biological father and your first step dad but like, I don't want you to feel like an incomplete until you find a father figure who can stick around, you know, like, unfortunately, right. like parents, you know, depart our lives and, and that can be sad yeah. and we have to work through that. And I'm not saying, you know, you, you shouldn't always strive to have good rent role models and mentors and have people in your lives, but I don't want you to feel like until you find the, like a permanent father figure, you're somehow like incomplete or less than. Right. No, I get that. And I really appreciate that. And I don't want you to think I of really like, you have that. to salvage this relationship so that you have some sort of father figure. I think you should think of this guy as this, like he was a father to you. He was important to you. And despite his mistakes and all his flaws, of which it sounds like there are many, you still would like to have him in your life on some level. And that level can include a lot of boundaries. You know, that level could yeah. be like, hey, I don't know if he's the person I'm going to trust kind of with anything. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go him to for, na for financial planning advice. I, I'm not going to be the person I go to with something where I'm just like, you know, I need to count on this person to follow through with my needs. Because if not, I could, you know, he's not, he's not the person you count on. He's the person maybe you have a, a, around just to like talk through things once in a while, to check in, just, you know, just to uh, be there. Right. It's just I feel so much like anger towards him, but I guess that's kind of what I need to. And that's okay. Communicate. You can have a relationship with you can have a relationship with someone you're very angry with. You can have a relationship with someone and be mad at them. You know, that's right. a relationship, and you don't have to be yeah. in this relationship, but it doesn't always have to be perfect. That's true. That's true. So in the letter, would you like? Like, is there a way to word something to somebody or is the letter then more for me then? Because yeah, yeah, yes. I feel like no matter what I say, it's not, it's not gonna. I, I think you're compute. exactly. I think the letter is for you to get your feelings out and to express yourself. Do not write right. the letter trying to think of saying things the perfect way so that he receives it. To your point, he is an okay. adult, 55 year old adult man. And most certainly it's like. I would I would have low expectations of things getting through to him, but you should okay. hold him accountable for how he handles this and receives this. And you absolutely should not bend over backwards to figure out how you can save him or get him to understand. If 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 you confronting him with just your honest feelings about the situation, and 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 a couple asks from how he he can, you know, take accountability. Hey, if you want me in your life, this is what I need from you. I don't know what that is, but you have the right to say whatever the fuck that is. You have the right to be honest. Right. Right. Thank you guys so much. Our pleasure. Yeah. So write that letter. Write it today. Get it all okay. out. Sit yeah. Down. It's all fresh in my mind. In uh, terms of the text message that I've kind of like ghosted him on, do I respond saying like, hey, I want to write you a letter? Uh, no. I would write... No. Write the letter. See how that goes. See how you feel about writing it. Read it back to yourself and just kind of, you know, meditate on how you writing a letter made you feel. Start there. And if you choose to reply to him, yeah, I don't know. I would just say, yeah, I'd like to get together. 
there are definitely some things I'd like to discuss with you. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. And I think reading him the letter is, if you think that, that that'll be easier for you and allow you to articulate yourself and keep your, you know, concentration, I think that's a totally great exercise. And you sit down and say, hey, listen, like you get together. If it's with your boyfriend, great. Maybe it might be better just without being teamed up on if it's just the two of you. And to say, it would really mean a lot to me if I could, I wrote you a letter, but I really just wanted to talk with you. But like, this is just easier for me. Can I read this to you? Um, and again, have the letter start with how much you care about him, what his relationship to you has meant to you over the years, how much it's meant to you to have him be a father figure, you know, lead, lead with that and then hit him with how you feel wronged by him. Give him a, a shit sandwich. Yeah. Tied up nicely. <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay. All right. But either way. You have the right to express yourself and stop waiting around for this person who clearly knows how to disappoint you to not disappoint you, you know, <laughs> like he's. Yeah, I think that's the conclusion I th feel like I've come to is that I yeah, just can't he, expect. He might. I can't expect much. Yeah. And he might have been your father figure, but you're no longer a kid. And so you have right. the capability and the right to defend yourself and confront him and you don't need to wait for him to do it. Okay. Thank you guys so much for your time and all the advice. I really do appreciate Our it. Our pleasure. Well, and I will write that letter. Please keep us posted. All right. All right. Take care. Thank you guys so right. much. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 What's going on? Hi, my name's Sophie. I'm 25 and my ex broke up with me after I took care of his aunt in hospice and I'm not sure how to maintain my friendship with his sister. Okay. Are you in the healthcare field or did you do this out of the goodness of your heart? Both. I'm a nurse, but okay. um, yeah. So I did it for both because I would do it for anybody. I mean, the short answer is I don't think the aunt <laughs> has anything to do with the friendship. I you totally know? agree. And yeah. my second short answer is, I, I mean, we can get into it and I'd love to know more about the relationship, but the aunt also has nothing to do with the boyfriend. Yeah. It's, it's like, and I get... I get why you're kind of like, fuck you. I did this for you. And I, you know, like I, I get where like, it's an ego kind of like you, I did this for you and you owe me this, but like clearly you took care of his aunt out of the goodness of your heart. It's part of what you do. And if he doesn't love you anymore or doesn't want to be with you, like, I don't think you want someone to stick with you just because you were a good caregiver to a, another family member. Yeah. And I think that's like the big thing is like, trying to like force my not force myself but trying to think that like i don't want to be with this person who doesn't appreciate what i've done but also like i love his family to death and it sucks not being that person to them anymore yeah well i mean you're still like so when you say best friends with his sister like best friends or like yeah friends? like She's the only friend that like ever spends the night. We spend like multiple days together. We So are you it's really like we, I put more effort into her. Are you really considering not being friends with her? No, it's not that. I think it's just like trying to set the boundaries because we broke up maybe like 8 months ago. Just like all of his family members still contact me. Like they respond to all my stories, my posts. His mom still sends me birthday money, like all of that and it's just a lot. And just trying yeah it's a lot and it's so hard to like walk away from them because i spent so much time that not a lot of couples actually like i was like with his mom like taking care of her sister dying yeah. so like we built a really strong relationship with that and it's hard to like let it go yeah, and like walk yeah, away totally you have to just try to separate it you know if you want to maintain yeah. a relationship with his mom and his sister you just focus on that relationship you know most of the time when we introduce someone to our parents, like the relationship exists because we're dating the person, you know, every once in a while, and they, which it seems to be the case in your case, those relationships go beyond simply just like, you know, accepting you because they're dating your son or they're dating your sister or your, like your, their brother, you know, and so you have to try to set, you know, and if that's the case, if you truly are friends with these people or have a relationship with these people beyond that relationship with your ex, then you just have to try to f be grateful for that and focus on that. 
but the more genuine those relationships are, the you know, I guess some, the easier it should be. And you just have to try to control your thoughts by uh, attribute, attributing everything that has to do with them with your ex. You know, yeah. my guess is, you know, it's been eight months. That's a decent amount of time. How long did you guys date for? Five years. Okay. So, yeah. So, while eight months isn't forever, I, I, I totally understand why you're not over it, but eight months is still a long time. Yeah. And you should be on the path to healing. It's not that, like, I'm not over it. It's just... What's hard is he's now dating his ex-girlfriend that he dated before me and they started dating within like a week of us breaking up. So I'm thinking there's overlap, <laughs> Maybe, but um, it's just hard because now I'm missing like all of her big moments in life. Like, Why are you missing those moments? Because she is inviting her brother Gotcha. and she doesn't want to make him uncomfortable. So that's where I'm like, I don't want to, like, I understand her position sure. 100%. Like, He's her family, but the other side of it is like I don't want to f- just like a closeted friendship where I don't get to be a part of those big moments because like I want to celebrate her. She's an amazing friend to me, but like I want to be there, not just like in our apartment. I want to do things with her, and I just feel like it's very. So how how hidden off. are you from her life? Because like not going to her marathons one thing like they're they're super fucking boring. Well, it's just like her birthday. Like I wasn't able to okay. go. Like she invited me to her birthday because at first he wasn't able to go. And then like two hours before he was able to go and she like disinvited me. And Ugh. I'm 25. Yeah. Like okay. I know so like that's... not everybody can get invited. Okay. But... So yeah, that sucks. No, I mean, if she's your best friend, you sh- like. Yeah. I mean, does she yeah. feel the same about you as you do about her? Yeah. She tells me like all the time, like you're going to be a my maid of honor in my wedding. Like, well, okay, I then she needs to start so being much. okay with uh, including you with around her, your ex. Yeah. And like, I'm okay with being around him. And it's just hard to like say that to her because he'll be, she'll be like, I don't want to make him uncomfortable. And I want to say, like, well, All right, he so shouldn't it sounds be the one like maybe you just need to kind of come to Jesus conversation with this friend, you know? Yeah. And it's something like, hey, listen, like, I totally get where you're coming from. I know you love your brother and I know this is awkward, but like, I like you've become my best friend. I hope you feel the same about me. And if she says, Oh my God, girl, I do like whatever besties for life. I'm like, great. I love that. You are. I, I, I hope I do stand up in your wedding. But if we're like, but if we're going to be my best friends, let's just be best friends. I don't like the, Like, trust me. Do you think I like the idea of being around your brother who might have cheated on me with this other girl. I don't, but I, I love you and I love our friendship so much that I'll, I'll get over it because I've accepted that your brother is not my person. And I'm not talking shit about your brother, but I've accepted that. Like I want someone who makes me feel loved and I want someone who might not have cheated on me and it's fine. And like, I'll just like, I'm getting over it. And I have gotten over it and I'll continue to get over it. But like, you can't hide us. If, if, if we are best friends, then, you know, I don't want you to hide me. I, I'm an adult. I'll behave myself. And at the end, like, well, with all due respect to your brother, like, I don't get why he gets to like, uninvite me to, to your party. He's like, well, I don't want to make him uncomfortable. Like, well, again, like I get, he's your brother, but I'm also your best friend. I'm not asking you to uninvite your brother. Yeah. I'm willing to be in the same room with him and his girlfriend and behave myself and not make your birthday party about me because I love you and you're yeah. my best friend. At least give me the opportunity to show you that I can be okay with this situation. But like, you're my best friend and like, I'm, I, I got uninvited to my best friend's wedding and my best friend's birthday party two hours before her party. Like, how can I be best friends with someone if I'm only like invited when her brother's not around, it'd be one thing if you're like, I can't handle seeing him. Oh my God. Then like, and you're crying all the time over, like, that's not what's going on. So I think you just have to say like, you you know, as as your best friend, don't, I, I think I deserve the opportunity to show you that I can handle it. And if he can't handle it, well, that's, I don't understand. Like maybe he should, like, why can't he handle being in the same room as me? And listen, like if, if, if you can't be my friend because your brother won't let you, then I, I'm, that makes me sad, but like, just tell me, but like, yeah, we're not, we're not best. Like we're not totally best friends. 
you know, I, and I yeah. love you and I want to be in your life and, and, you know, yeah. Give me the opportunity, opportunity to show you that I can, I can handle this. And we've like kind of had that conversation and it just turned in. And I was like, I like, it's not about me. It's all about you. I love you more than I love him at this moment. Like, yes, I, it was the breakup was a blind side. I, obviously still miss him but like I'm working on getting over it and focusing on myself and doing that is being your friend because you make me feel good you make me feel loved but I don't want to like I feel like I could put you above my feelings for him in that situation because it is your birthday and I want to be there and celebrate you yeah I want to punch him in the face but like I don't need What'd like I don't say? need to associate myself with him anymore she was just like he's my brother at the end of the day um, I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. He doesn't care that we're friends at all. He'll ask about you. Um, and his new girlfriend, nobody really enjoys the presence of. So, and I'm just like, I don't care what she thinks about me. Like, I'm here your, as your friend. Like, I want you to validate my feelings about that. Yeah. What did she say? And then just the same thing. She was like, I don't care what she thinks. Um, she means nothing to me. You're my best friend. It's just, there's going to be some things you're not invited to. And then that was like the end of the conversation. But I was like, I want to well, be like there your for your wedding? big moments. Like, like what again? Like, yeah. What? I like, I want to celebrate you. Like what other moments am I, I don't care if it's just like a Friday night at the bars, but like your birthday, a wedding, like all these big things. I want to be there. Yeah. Like to celebrate yeah, you. You don't have to be there all really the time. Person in my life. But, yeah, like I set my own boundaries, but for the big things, I want to be there. And, and she says what to this? The same thing. Like, there's going to be some things you're not invited to. So, but, but some things is not I'm her like, birthday. And if and if she wants you to be her maid of honor, I'm guessing her brother's going to be there. Yeah, he's probably going to be in the wedding. Like, and that's where I'm like, why do I want to keep putting up with this friendship? Maybe, because yeah. like after a breakup, I'm going through like cutting people out of my life who don't bring me happiness and even though she does but like there's moments where like she makes me feel really low so yeah. i guess that's where i'm coming from is like do i continue to maintain this friendship when like all of this is still happening maybe not and that's the hard part because sometimes she's like a sister to me so. i don't think it's black or white i think you know what i'm saying like i think it's good that you've already yeah. put this out there i think maybe another conversation to remind her and just kind of reinforce your idea but just say like i and if she ultimately says the same thing you could just say like i i hear you but like it it definitely affects our friendship and then you can just kind of slowly distance yeah. yourself and see if she responds it's just like you're just not my best friend if you're if if I can't be a part of big moments in your life, I am not asking to be there at your thanks fucking giving or I'm there for Christmas yeah. or every day. But like, I don't want to get uninvited to your birthday because your brother decides to show up. And I'm not saying this, you know, and maybe stop with the whole con like where you could help yourself is stop with the whole like, do I want to kill him? Sure. You know, like you don't need to say that stuff. I think you need to just generally act indifferent. Like that's where you can help yourself. Like yeah. she might be your best friend, but you need to vent to someone else about your ex. If you need to vent to someone, you know, to not her and any comments yeah, and about I stop doing that. Yeah. Any comments about like, do I want to kill him? Sure. Or am I still mad at him? Sure. Like, d like talk into her that you are over it, that you have moved on, you know, and with someone else, yeah. if you need to vent, vent, but like, be careful what you say to her about your brother. And that might go a long way because maybe you are making little comments here or there that you're not even realizing that makes her just uncomfortable with the idea of you two being in the same room and bring it up again and just reinforce that this is important to you and, and see where it goes. And again, like it's not black or white. You don't just have to cut her off. She can still be yeah. your friend, but all that really changes internally is that you just kind of stop calling her your best friend and you stop and you have different expectations of her right now. You're calling her your best friend and your expect expectations are, as her as your best friend to like be there for the important moments and if she uh stands her ground with this position that she has now regardless of whatever adjustments you make um then you just have to change your narrative she's your friend she's just not your best friend yeah and like i've 
I, I mean, I do need to be better, but I have thought about like not saying anything about him either. Like I've been really trying to work on that. Yeah. But then that'll recently, take time. She's been, yeah. yeah. And but I'm saying until you're totally over it. Doing it. Yeah. Until you're, to- well, she is, yeah. she brings him up. Well, she's been bringing up the ex girlfriend who's the current girlfriend recently and like saying like more negative comments and then I start to think about like well are they going to break up is he going to come back and then I'm starting to kind of get back into that like not being so over it would you take him back no sure? there's all no I'm positive I'm positive I would not take I him back but there's always just like you. that little hope <laughs> Uh, it's just hard like five years with someone and then breaks up two days after the funeral like do you think he cheated nothing on you? happened yeah i do i do but yeah i'm out there <laughs> good i'm putting myself out there so i think you should just ask her to like just like listen like i don't really want to hear about her yeah uh, and I, I know you don't want me to vent to you about your brother and like i'm 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 over it. I've moved on. And as far as any thoughts, you gotta let go of the hope. Yeah, I do. Because even if they break up, doesn't mean he's gonna come back to you. And even if he does, do you really want him coming back to you out of regret no. or because it didn't work out? I mean, I would only take him back if he really like came back with a lot of like clear answers of why he made the decision that he did and, and yeah. why he left and and being upfront about the overlap or and what's going to be different about this relationship. I think that's the only thing that I would want out of all of it is just to like get the answers. But majority of the time you don't get the answers that you want. I want to win the lottery, but you know, I'm not sitting here around hoping that it's going to happen. And if you can identify that you want those answers and those are important things to you, like I think that's even more reason to be like, this needs to be a protected no go zone in our friendship because like all friendships have that. Like I have friends who are like, feel so close to you, childhood best friends. We don't talk about certain political issues because I know it's going to make me not see the things that I like love in them. And it's like, it's no different. Like all friendships have areas where it's just like, you don't traverse this because it's better for both of you. And even though this one, like I'm sure you talk about all other kinds of boys and dating, et cetera. And so it's like probably feels foreign, but you're so entitled to that. And it doesn't mean it's like a weird, bad or defective friendship. And I think that's like why, like we're both still trying to like get out of that because we used to live together. So when her and I would like vent about her brother all the time, like when I, when we were dating, she would like complain about him in like brotherly terms. And then I would complain about about him in like relationship aspects. And that's how we ultimately got like really close. But now she'll just talk to me about like how he's annoying her as a brother. And it's just like, I I don't want to hear that because it makes me miss. Yeah, She should be able to stop that. Cause if the only thing you can talk about is your ex, then you're not best friends. Yeah. And we don't do that as much anymore, but it was just at the beginning during the breakup, she was there for me, which was so weird, but. And I think you just say to her, listen, I love our friendship so much. And I love all, here's all the reasons why I love your friendship. It would be, you know, I'm moving on from your brother. I'm actually have moved on, but it, it is hard. I don't want to hear about the ex and like, I, you know, I'm always here for you if you need, but I'd rather you just kind of vent to someone else about her and I'd rather just like have our friendship be about us and not about your brother. Yeah. Again, I'd, I'd still love to be a part of your birthday party cause I'll be fine. But I just, you know, if you can't have me at your party with him, then don't bring him into our sleepovers. Cause that's what she's doing. Yeah. You know, like she's inviting him to your sleepovers or your time hanging out every time she brings him up. And she's so worried about making things uncomfortable for her brother. Like it's kind of uncomfortable for you to, you know, either, yeah. either she's giving you false hope or she's just like, you're just investing energy talking about a guy that you're trying to move on from. So yeah, she needs to respect some boundaries. She's asking you to respect some boundaries. And so these, this certainly th- seems like something you guys can s- certainly work through. You guys just have to be willing, to, if you truly are best friends, just be considerate to the other person's feelings, set your expectations, enforce your boundaries, and, and just not talk about certain things. Like people do it all the time just hard yeah thank you i know but help yourself out i'm guessing you're doing things to make it worse yeah having like the thought of like Like, just wanting answers is definitely making it worse too because like i want to he cheated on you there's your answer it just like yeah (laughs) right deep down in your gut you know that whether he fucked her or it was just emotional cheating he did some shit 
Because like yeah. you said, he broke up with you out of the blue and a week and a half later had a new girlfriend. That's fine, you know, and your ego's a little bruised, but like you don't need, like the, the reason bit. why you have a time letting it go is because you haven't just acknowledged it. You haven't just said it out loud. The motherfucker cheated on me. I don't know what he did, but he did it. And it's not my fault. It's his fault. He's a prick. I don't deserve that. And you just tell your ego to shut the fuck up because right now you're not being honest with yourself about what happened and your ego is saying, hey, he fucking cheated on you. You're a loser. And you're like, no, 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 no. You're trying to, and you, and you, in those answers you want from him are him saying he didn't cheat on you and having some explanation as to why he couldn't be without, with you that would allow you to go back to your ego and say, see, I'm not a loser. Fuck you. So just accept yeah. that it happened and move on. And it just makes me think, cause like right after I was the one apologizing, being like, I wasn't your girlfriend for those three months. I was taking care of your aunt. So it's my fault that yeah. you drifted away. And it's just, and I think that's where my ego was hurt too. So I was like, why the yeah, fuck Yeah, you're trying to find explanations to why. Like, listen, yeah. there's, it, it just didn't work out. You know, he fell out of love with you and that might, I, I don't, I hope that's not hard to hear. And I understand, but like, yeah, it does happen for all you know, there's a lot, I mean, you probably haven't even fully like processed all the reasons that you weren't happy in that relationship. You were blindsided and, and you were just angry that he took, you took care of his aunt and that he cheated on you, but you didn't want to like acknowledge that. And so you haven't really spent any time being like, you know what, you know how I wasn't happy in that relationship, you know? Yeah. I'm guessing. And it does come to light more now seeing how he's doing all the things that I asked him to do with this new girl. So, yeah. So there, there's my answer. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing he can tell you. There is no answer he can give you that's going to make you feel better. You have all yeah. the answers you need. You just have to accept them, and and know that you know there's something better out there for you, and it's not him. Well, I'm going on a date tonight. After this, there you go. So, Congrats. Oh, well, we would love an update I'm, about I'm that. I'm putting myself yeah. out there. Well, good so. luck. Stay positive. Set some boundaries with the friend. Uh, accept what happened with him and, and, you know, really move on, control your thoughts, stop talking about him with your, with your friend, mm -hmm. set some healthy boundaries and you'll be all good. You'll be all right. Thank you. I all appreciate right. it. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget we have Violet Benson tomorrow to go over all the new episodes of Love is Blind. We have Girl Boss Town on Thursday. Better date than never, 9 p.m. Eastern, live on Thursday night. If you haven't checked out Vile Files Plus yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Bye. Bye.